export settings. So let's have a look at export settings and more importantly, bitrate settings. Uh, export, exporting the video has always been quite the bane of my filmmaking life, I guess you could say. When uploading videos to YouTube or Vimeo, previously I've never been able to grasp that crispness and have that fine looking image that other YouTubers and other videos on Vimeo may have, despite having the same settings and uh, project settings and the same camera, the same equipment. I've just never been able to get that and it's always put a strain on the video. You may have fantastic acting, fantastic story, and yet having a really poorly compressed video will ruin the audience's experience. So what have we got here? We got a dress hanging on a tree and uh, abruptly it catches on fire and uh, violently burns itself to death. Funny story about this actually, um, the pieces of dress that uh, rip, fly off in the wind on fire actually caused a small forest fire. And as I've said in previous videos, I've always learned something from when I've gone out shooting and the lesson learned on this shoot was always carry a fire extinguisher. As for the rest of the day, you will go thirsty as all our water was poured onto the field. So this is our video. Now, like in the previous tutorial, we've got that film look. Uh, I don't know what this film is about, really. It's about burning dresses. But anyway, let's go to File, Export, Media. Now, first thing you may notice when you're looking at the format, there's so many to choose from. What do you choose? And then you may notice when you actually finally think, OK, I've done some research. I'll go with H264. Presets. Let's have a look which one's going to be best. Oh, wow. There is a lot of choices. Uh, which one do you choose from? And you can be here all day doing tests. And you can go on forums. And you can find different information. And you may just find out that no matter what you read online. And what you take away from uh, these forum information that your video still doesn't have that crispness and it's because the forums are giving you the correct information they are they're giving you what exactly you should be doing uh to the youtube standards to vimeo stand standards and that is why your video may not look as crisp so for example we're going to click youtube 1080p 23.976 now if I expand this a little bit more. Standard settings here, remember you want these to match your project settings and also for the filmic click, remember you want to be going for the 1920 by 1080p at 23.976 frames per second. Now you have all these different settings. We're just going to focus on the video area and about the, the different settings. I'm not going to talk too much about what they do and uh, the different parameters they have is I want this tutorial series it's going to be like driving a car. You may know how to drive a car, you know how to get from A to B, but you may not know how to uh, repair the engine or take a wheel off, but you know how to drive. And I think that's what this tutorial series is going to be about, is going to be about getting the best results uh, with the most basic of knowledge. You're not going to have to have textbook upon textbook to know what everything means, but you just know how to do it. So what we're looking at here is YouTube standard bitrate, which is this, eight megabits per second. Now this is gonna give you the quality that YouTube requires, which is eight megabits per second. Now that isn't gonna give you the best of the best. Now what you wanna do to get the best settings is don't worry about this preset, but we're gonna go up a little bit. And we're gonna change the level to 5.1. You come down here to the bitrate settings. This is the most important area. This is going to be uh, adding the wax to your piece of woodwork. And we've got all these different settings. We've got CBR, VBR one pass, VBR two pass. Now CBR stands for constant bitrate. VBR stands for variable bitrate. So variable bitrate means that you can vary the amount of bits used to represent a frame so that the overall average amount of bits per frame is achieved. Now it goes out by doing this, by stealing bits from frames with less information to encode, and then it gives them to frames that does need the extra bits. 
A constant bitrate means that for each frame, the same amount of bits is used no matter what. So say if you have a frame which needs three bits uh, encoded and you have a constant bitrate of six, then it's gonna give them the extra three. However, if you have a frame that needs 12 and you only feed it six, it's gonna get hungry. And if this happens, constant bitrate will look worse than VBR. You may see the two past VBR, essentially what this does, and it takes a little longer rendering, uh, is that it will do one scan to calculate each frame, then another to encode. Now this is gonna give you the best results. If you have a two gigabyte RAM machine and a slow processor, and you're trying to render a 45 minute short film, then I hope you have the special edition of The Hobbit, as it's gonna take a really long time to render. For this video, we only have a 19 second clip, so it doesn't really matter. If you are interested in learning about what the different settings do, then I will include links at the bottom of the video. So we're going to change our bitrate encoding to VBR2 pass. The YouTube standard is 8. The maximum YouTube can take is 30. In the forms, it will not tell you to do this, and it is quite wrong to do so. We're going to put our target bitrate at 75. Now, look at our file size for a 19 second video. It's quite ridiculous. However, this is going to give us the best results. So we're going to export that. Now, now let's have a look at the difference between this video compared to the YouTube standard.